obvious. But good. Just a moment. Is it completely accomplished? Isn't it part of your mission to get back to your base? Sure it is. Men as highly trained as you are invaluable to the service. You have unloaded your bombs where they will do the most good. But now, all your diligence and training should be directed to the task of getting back. That may not be so easy, especially if you're forced to make your way back without your aircraft. And you may have to do just that. to abandon aircraft. Pilots and navigator, take a quick reading and give the boys a location check. No matter how careful we may be, some of our planes are inevitably going to be lost to enemy action. Each man makes sure he puts on his survival kit. They've all been well briefed in evasion and survival techniques, so they stand a good chance of not only landing and living, but of evading the enemy making their way back to our lines or behind the enemy lines to be picked up by our tactical rescue planes or by submarines. However, in this plane crew, there are some widely varying personalities. Each will succeed in evading according to the degree he has absorbed the information given out at briefing sessions. And the success of his evasion will depend on the intelligent application of the techniques he has learned. Although these men will land in widely separated spots, their first action will be to try to get together again. They were informed at briefings before they took off as to the best ways of regrouping once they have landed. Lieutenant Whaley, the first navigator, landed all right. He won't be regrouping for a long time. Luck is an important factor in evading. And you've got to take advantage of every lucky break. Tail gunner Fernandez and radar observer Alderman were lucky enough to land safely and near one another. Hey, Fernandez, get rid of that chute. Sure, Joe. Sure. Oh, what a mess. It ain't funny, Joe. We're in a tough spot. That mud hole in the whole place and I had to fall into it. Nobody know you now, I think. You better leave some on for a disguise. You better get some on you, too. <laughs> All right, come on now. Let's get down to some serious thinking. I must tell you to mind, Chief. Well, first of all, where are we? Looks like there's a farm over there. Yeah, look, there's smoke. Let's sneak through the woods and see what we can find out. Take this with us? Now, we'll dump it back there in the wind.
You wait here. American Airmen. Mirakonsky. American Airmen. Angles the wrong. First, they neglected to get away quickly from their landing place. Then they failed to make a proper reconnaissance. Also, there was no need at that particular time to establish contact. What's more, only one man should have approached the peasant, while the other remained hidden. But what about some of the others? Gunner Batchelor also landed safely.
quite. Now. Now, how are some of the others of the crew making out? Here are two who landed successfully and teamed up. Sergeant Houston, flight engineer, and Sergeant Wilbur, radio operator, have overcome the initial shock of landing and are operating as a well-trained and resourceful team. Somebody's moving out or moving in. No. See those timbers? They're fixing the place. Don't be around the dump. Mm -hmm. Look, this, this gives me an idea. Yeah, yeah, it might work. Look, you see that junk over there? It looks like clothes. So what? Probably stink. Yeah, it'll stink a lot worse than a lousy prison. Okay, okay, you talked me into it. Watch it. to give us away. Good. They did right. First, they scouted the area. Then they approached a poorer home. The better houses are usually taken over as billets by enemy troops. Then they realized that native clothing is the best disguise for evading. You cannot get shot for wearing civvies. Rules of international warfare permit you to wear them providing it's only to evade capture. Yeah. How about this? Oh, it's fine. Try it. Try it on. It work. Well, here's one for me. That's it. Here's a pair of pants. They look a little big for me. You try them. Hey, don't forget your dog tags. Yeah. I'll prove we're military and not spies. Somebody's Sunday hat. Yeah. Looks good. Pull it down over your ears. Hide that giveaway haircut. Yeah, we better keep away from people as much as we can. Sure. Yeah. Do a lot of traveling at night. Now, where are we going and how are we going to get there? Which direction is northwest? That way. According to this map, this is our shortest way home. Now, if we move off... Yeah, it looks pretty populated through there. No. But near the coast here, it'll be easier for us to make contact with the underground. Yeah, you're right. And maybe we get picked up by a sub. Sure. 
Now, that's our general direction. Well, let's get going. Yeah. Hey, fish that stuff there. Uh-oh. Wheelbarrow. Yeah, let's get some of this stuff out of here. And it works. Another idea? Yeah. With this thing, we could do lots of traveling in the daytime. It'd make us look more like peasants. I don't know. We'd attract too much attention. Most of the young guys around here are in the army. Well, how about this? A guy that isn't pushing this thing can, can have his arm in a sling. I'd be a good alibi for not being in uniform. Sounds good. This thing would sure make it a lot easier to carry our gear. Let's give it a try. Another member of the crew also made a safe landing. Taking a little time out to pull himself together, co-pilot Allen used good common sense in concealing himself effectively. He is then able to look for a buddy he has seen come down not far away. Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy! George! I, I'm in a bad way. I got out cold when I hit the tree. Can't you, can't you get loose from your harness? I hurt my arm. If I can only reach that tree. Take it easy, kid. Those junkheads aren't far away. Come on, boy, watch yourself. Take it easy. Be back in a moment. Okay. Alan, you all right? Do this, Gordon. You scared me silly. Glad to see you, fellas. Come on. We've got a seriously bent skipper over here. Hey, never mind that. Mine's open. Here you are, Captain. That ought to keep you from slipping around. Feels better already. What'd you learn your first aid, Gordon? Don't laugh. It was in the Boy Scouts. I took a refresher after I got into the Air Force. Well, George, looks like you're in bad shape for traveling. Get down quick and keep quiet! God. Give me a hand. Easy, Rob. My arm. Watch it. We gotta take cover. Take stock of the situation. Looks pretty good right over there. Okay, let's go. All right, here, get your arm around our shoulder. My arm, watch my arm. Ow! Okay, easy. Brother. Easy, easy, Captain. What are we gonna do now, Captain? Will Allen gets back with a survival kit. That's a lot, will you? Enemy's thicker than flies around here. You're right. George, I think we ought to get out of here as soon as we can. Well, I suggest we spend the day here. Get some rest, then move on. Travel by night, huh? Right. We'll go quicker and quieter that way without attracting enemy attention. Now, let's make a plan. Get the map. Well, first of all, then, where are we going? I think the smartest thing to do is head for the border. To the southwest. Southwest. In that direction. 
Captain, you hit it right on the head. That should bring us out about here. But that means traveling about 1,100 miles. 1,100 miles? We'll be in occupied territory by then. Well, that's something. You ought to get some help there. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Okay, let's get everything set for a start early this evening. How about a quick scout? Let's see if we can spot some of the others. Roger. In the meantime, Turner, you tear up that chute. We may need some cloth. Chum, it'll come in handy when your socks wear out. After Alan gets back, into the sack. We'll watch turn and turn. Go ahead and you take the first tour. Yes, sir. Keep your eyes and ears open for snakes. Human as well as reptile. And keep a good lookout for some of the boys that might join up. See you later. Be careful of that pea shooter, Gordon. You know what it's for. Yeah, for survival purposes. For food, not for offense. Yeah, well, I just wanted to check it. I landed kind of hard. They are planning well. They know the enemy will not give up easily and will make every effort to capture them. It's that time, Skip. How you feeling? My leg, it's killing me. Not so good, huh? It's very ungood, Jimmy. Okay, let's not get maudlin. You guys, the three of you. You shove on, I'll, I'll stay. Not skip, we'll touch you right along with us. Now listen, Gordon. That's an order. Do you hear me? An order. Now, here's the straight dope. You guys leave me as much stuff out of your survivor kits as you can spare. I'll hold up here until I can get along on my own. But, boss... I'll be okay. I think we're far enough away from any village or farms. I don't think there's much chance of the enemy finding me. Now, let's get the show on the road. The side paths, so. Avoid the main roads in the big towns. But we can't leave you here like this. Look, maybe Look, I'd... kid. You're not leaving me. I'm staying. Okay, Paul. Let's go, huh? Wait a minute. Let's wait till we get into deep shadow before we cross it. Right. And careful of flushing out birds and things. They'll give us away. Yeah. Hold it, fellas. Sounds like the skipper's 22. Skipper fired to warn us. 
That was his last order. Let's shove off. Now that their presence is known to the aggressors, the evaders will take extra precautions to avoid detection and capture. They'll be careful how they walk and travel as quietly as possible. Before crossing a road, they'll make sure they're not being observed. They'll look for a bend in the road or a place where tree shadows give cover and where they won't cast revealing shadows, especially in moonlight. They'll reconnoiter for some place that will afford them cover and concealment, not a lone tree or a rock where an enemy observer could find them easy targets. Instead, they'll look for a clump of trees or shrubbery or a long hedgerow. They'll move in high grass only when the grass tops are swayed by the wind. Otherwise, they'll give themselves away. They won't crawl too long. They know crawling takes a lot out of you. Once in the clear, they'll get to their feet again and continue forward as noiselessly as possible. When walking across a newly plowed field, they'll tread through the furrows lengthwise to avoid a bobbing motion against the skyline. And they'll crouch low because a low silhouette cannot be spotted as easily as an upright one. Yes, the long hike ahead for these men will require never-ending caution. Now, let's see what happened to Lieutenant Sturm, radar observer. He suffered landing shock, but used his head and decided to rest overnight before trying to move. You know. Hold it till I drop some of this stuff down to you. Quick, into the woods. Boy, am I glad to see you. Same here. You look like you had a rough night. You said it. And where the devil did you get that stuff? Kid, that wasn't funny. Bad, huh? Yeah. One of the enemy tried to jump me. So I knocked him off and swiped his outfit. Oh. Hey, uh, Lieutenant, you haven't got something to eat there, have you? I had to leave all of my stuff behind. Sure. Hey, you've got a gun. Why didn't you shoot a bear or something? Not around here. That's an invitation to come and get me. Hey, you realize that if they get you with that outfit, you could be shot as a spy? I'm gonna have to take the chance until I get something else. Say, have you seen any of the other fellows, sir? No. Sergeant Odell didn't get out of the plane. He was crocked by flak. Rough. Have you any idea of where we are, sir? Yeah. I got a pretty good fix just before we bailed out. As near as I can figure, we're right about here. It looks like we should go that way. That's 900 miles north by west, where we might get help. Check. It's okay by me. What about this stuff? Well, we'll be keeping pretty much out of sight so we can keep most of it with us. <laughs> Some of it might come in handy. Yeah. We'll be running into colder weather before long. Hey, take a good look at this map before we get rid of it. Get rid of it? Well, won't we need it? 
No, it's a target chart. Secret. There's a cloth map in here we can use. All right, I'll burn it as soon as we get out of here. We'd better travel at night, particularly in this area. Right. Let's hide everything, do a little scouting, and come back and rest till dark and take off. Right. For almost a week now, Houston and Wilbur have been making good progress. To avoid attracting attention and arousing suspicion, they always get out of sight when resting or eating. In fact, whenever they are not actually traveling. They remember their survival training and live off the land as much as possible, saving the food in their survival kits. What kind of birds laid these eggs? I don't care what kind of birds laid them. All I'm hoping is we can find some more. Boy, this wheelbarrow sure comes in handy, in lots of ways. Yeah, you. It's helping us both evade. Sure, sure. Too bad it couldn't have been a bed. Why, your attitude surprises me, chum. I'm sorry, but I found this baby, and it's mine. You better let me have a chance sitting in it once in a while. Take me to help push it. Oh, you'll help push, all right. Or somebody will spot you for being a phony farmer. No calluses on your hands. Yeah, have it your way. Come on, let's get going. We've rested long enough. Yeah. Oh. Although they keep moving a good part of each day, they never hurry themselves into a state of exhaustion, no matter how anxious they are to make progress. In the meantime, many miles away, Alan, Gordon, and Turner are successfully evading capture, tramping mile after mile, day after day. One reason they have gotten so far is that they have taken care of their feet. When they get wet, they'll stop as soon as possible, wash their socks and feet, and be sure they're dry before continuing. They'll loosen their shoelaces so their feet won't swell. That always pays off. They'll frequently change direction to throw off their pursuers. Looks like a safe spot. Oh, my aching back. I'm plumb beat. Carl, we've really been knocking the miles off this past week. Any idea how far we've come? Oh, I'd say about 150 to 175 miles. Cheap. Only 900 miles left to go. Well, we're still at liberty. That's something to be thankful for. Yeah. See, it's getting light. I suggest we bed down for the day. <sighs> Suits me fine. If I've got the next watch, how I dread it. Well, don't forget to wake me for your relief.
American. Do not make move for gun. No info to them. Yeah. First, let's make sure they're not hostile. You are American flyers, no? Wouldn't you like to know? You need not tell me. Already I know, by your clothes and shoes. So? Have no fear. We are friends. We have scrambled eggs for you in the village. Hey, scrambled eggs. That's what they told us at the briefing. That's the password. Say, who are you? Friends, you must trust us. We will help you. You have identification. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Good. Uh, your clothes, no good for here. I get others. Grandfather will stay with you. I come back later. All right. Well? I don't know. I got a hunch it might be an all right deal. Anyhow, we'll keep our mouths shut. Say, Grandpa, what's what's the dope? Where'd she go? Moody Carlos. Thanks. Well, boss, what do we do? Sit on the backs of our laps and wait? No, let's let's shift positions just in case. Then we can watch you come back. If everything's okay, one of us can go back here for her. your places. Sure, we played safe. Good. Uh, take off those clothes, put on these, quick. Let's look for a place to change. Do it here, I'll go, till you're ready. Okay. Hurry, quick. Oh, I'll try these. A mess, we're all set. Good. Somebody come and get your things later. Now we go to house. One, follow me. You two walk another side of the road. Grandfather will follow. Go to back of house. Okay. Now we go. Now, as disguised evaders, they must try to forget they are Americans. They must avoid falling into a military step, which can give them away. When meeting natives or passing them, they must be careful not to give the impression that they are trying to avoid anyone. Instead, they must appear calm and confident and must seem to know exactly where they are and where they are going. Fix up place for sleeping. We bring food. All right. Good. Hey, condemned men ate a hearty breakfast. Oh, knock it off, Gordon. Well, Captain? What goes now? I don't know. Guess it's just the old army game. Hurry up and wait. Yeah, wait. 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 While they wait and wait, let's see what's happening to Bachelor and Stern. 
After evading successfully, they are not stymied by dangerous situations that would have stopped them a few weeks ago. God isn't paying any attention to those people. People and more people. Every day it gets tougher to get through. Uh, still, we keep moving. Yeah. But we'd travel lots faster if we had some other clothes. Well, we haven't got them. So we gotta take things as they are. Well... The smart thing now is for us to swim across this river after dark. Oh, no. I nearly froze to death crossing that last one. Well, what then? Look, Lieutenant, that guard isn't doing a damn thing about checking papers. Get across that bridge? Look, we'll make it appear as though you're my prisoner. I don't know. Well, the prisoner gag worked for us last time. Maybe so. But I wish that guard weren't there. Well, suppose I knock that ape off. Cut it. What are you trying to do? You nuts? We're not trying to kill troops. We're trying to win for petty sabotage. We're trying to evade. You didn't think I was serious, did you? I wonder. Well, come on. And watch yourself. All right. I'll keep about four paces and back it. Hey, what if that guard starts gabbing with you? Uh, don't worry about that. I know a little bit of the lingo. Dabre, Carl. No, no, not that. Your accent will give you away. Well, what? I'll move fast. You make it look like you're following close so I won't get away. Okay. Looks like now is a good time to go. There'll be a lot of people crossing when we get there. Let's go. Right. In evading, you've got to consider every dodge and trick available. Misdirection, diversion, and bluffing are often called for. But you can't afford to take any unnecessary chances, especially if you're wearing an enemy uniform. These men became overconfident. Now, their future is dark, very dark. Some evaders make things tough for themselves and others as well by failing to exercise self-control. Uncertainty creates mental stresses and strains which make it difficult to accept confinement patiently. Boss, how much longer are we going to sit here? How do I know? What I do know is we're going to sit here and wait. So we're told to do differently. Do you think, Captain, we can trust these jokers? Damn it, Turner, we've got to trust them. Don't you remember that being dinned into you at briefings? That's for sure. The briefer said if once you make your mind up to trust the natives, trust them implicitly. Yeah. Uh, get stool, please. To keep you strong for when you move. We gonna move when? How I know? Today, maybe next week. Maybe two weeks. You move when next safe house ready for you. Look, Cookie, where's the next house? Come on, give. Damn it, Turner, she doesn't know where the next house is. No one unit in the net has direct contact with the next. Now cut out all the interrogation, you understand? Sorry, miss. He'll be all right. Just a bit edgy, that's all. Waiting and more waiting. 
That's something you've got to expect when you're being passed by the underground. But it's for your own security. Remember that. But here are a couple of evaders who aren't waiting. Houston and Wilbur have learned this primary lesson. While evading as disguised natives, you've got to live an entirely new life if you expect to continue living your old one. Me too. Look, it's kind of natural for both of us to look a bit stupid. You said it. Yeah, it's great for a rest. Oh, sounds good to me. Mm. We'd have given those fellas half a chance. They'd have stopped to chew the fat. That old gag worked. Keep moving. Don't give them a chance to talk. And mind your own business. All right, Professor. Let's move off the road. How far do you figure we've come? Well, let's see. We've been moving right along for about three weeks, ten miles a day. At, what is ten? Well, say 225 miles. We're about here. Still got a long way to go. But I'm still traveling, thanks to my wheelbarrow. Oh, well, my friend, you can have it for a while. Still plenty of daylight and a hell of a way to go. Let's move. Short rests will conserve your energy and keep you in good shape. It's been well over a month since Alan, Gordon, and Turner bailed out. No, he didn't say anything. You didn't see him? No, I didn't. You must have heard something. Well, yeah, I, I heard a noise, but it wasn't enough to waken me. Ah, oh, that damn fool Turner. Yeah, it's open. Oh, why did he have to go barging out like that? Yeah, I must have forgot to bar the door. What do you do, take a party, do you suppose? Oh, it's hard to tell. He's been getting more and more jittery. Just from waiting. Where you been? Out for a walk, that's all. Just a little walk. Anybody see you? No, there wasn't a soul around. Listen, Turner, and listen well. Don't ever pull anything like that again. This is no time to be out trying to make passes at Dame. And nothing happened. Yeah? Well, suppose somebody saw you and got curious. That could lead to all of us getting caught. And that means the people who are trying to help us, too. It's not just a matter of our safety. We've got to think of the future. The guys who may be knocked down later and want help to evade. Okay, let's forget it and hit the hay. This man is American flyer, too. Who are these men? You 
do not know them? No. No, I don't. Who are they? Oh, I get you guys now. I'm Lieutenant Evans, Air Force. Who are you fellas? Names don't get talked about very much around here, so it doesn't really matter who we are. What gives here? Why ask me? Ask them. They do not want to give their names. That's their business. You stay here. Do not move from place, please. Get this, you guys. We're all in this together. I want to go home as much as you do. Discussing people's names just isn't good etiquette, see? All right. Have it your way. No names. What happened to the rest of your crew, Lieutenant? Oh. I'm the only one left from a B-50 that got knocked down during the big raid. Same one you were in. Oh? Yeah. Smoke? Yeah, thanks. No, thanks. Thanks. Say, uh, where are you from? In the States, I mean. Oh, New York. The Bronx. The Bronx? Yeah. How uh, long since you were there? Oh, a little over six months, I guess. The Bronx, huh? Well, the Bronx is too far from Times Square to suit me. Well, I always made it pretty fast. How you did that? Something I'd like to know. Simple. Take the subway or the 6th Avenue L. Yeah, well, maybe so. Well, I'm getting kind of tired. What do you say we turn in, huh, fellas? Okay. Um, Evans, you can have that big double bed right over there. Hey, you get up. Hey, okay, fella, start talking. What gives here anyway? Have you got an identification? Well, sure, but what's the idea of kicking? Hey, what goes on? I don't know, something phony. Come on, here. come on, let's see your identification. You got an AGO card on you, haven't you? I got my dog tags. We took our AGO cards away from us before the raid. You know that. Look, you got some cigarettes I'd like to know something about. Sure. What about them? Well, if you bailed out when we did, you got a lot of them. Oh, yeah? Hey, wait a minute. I got you are a phony. This phony is this phony bloodshed. How do you know? I sold fabric before I got in the service. I don't get it. Look, all the chits we carry are nylon. This joke is his rayon. Here, feel the difference. Oh, knock that off. Come on. Too much noise. Uh, hold it, let the people here handle it. What's the trouble? <laughs> Guy's a phony American working against Now, you. wait a minute. I take care. Let's go. 
How do you know he's phony? He tripped him up. Here, look at these. This one's mine. I know it's the McCoy. Here, feel this. Now this. All right. Talk too much. You will pay for this. You pay, mister. Take him out. Come. Here's your tip. I keep this to show my people how they work. Be ready to move. Maybe tomorrow night. This house not safe now. Fine pickle. Maybe I'm responsible for this mess. Maybe somebody saw me last night. Well, it's possible, but... But who knows? Maybe the guy had some other leave. Anyway, let's not cry over spilt milk. You certainly used your head tonight. And you, Gordon, nice job. It just goes to show we've got to stay on our toes every blessed minute. Yeah, sure, Jim. Just imagine a guy from the Bronx not knowing the 6th Avenue L was coming down. Yeah. Well, let's get our gear together in case we have to move fast. Enemy intelligence is clever. Its personnel are well trained. They menace your safety every minute you are in enemy territory. So far, Houston and Wilbur have managed to avoid any incidents. I didn't realize this country was so damn big. You said that right, buddy. We've been traveling for nearly uh, a month and a half now. This we must have covered about 400 miles. I'll take a look at this thing. Uh-oh. This looks bad. Uh, that's it, chum. Looks like a pushmobile finally turned in a suit. Uh, here I was going to take her back to the States with me. States? Yeah. Here, let's, um, let's get out of the way. Throw it over on the side there. What do you expect to do with it back in the States? I'm going to have her gilded, all over. So I could uh, show my grandchildren how their uh, granddaddy got away. Well, maybe it's a good thing we haven't got so much left to carry now. Oh, I don't know. The further we get into closely settled areas, the tougher it'll be to find things to eat. Well, we haven't got too much left in the survival kit. Without that thing, it would be safer to travel mostly at night. Let's look for some good cover and rest until dark. Good idea. Get this on. Ah, okay. There we go. So long. You'll miss being in the States. Come on, let's move. Good or bad? It is hard to say. I think it is what you have been waiting for. You mean we're going to move out of here? Tonight? Yes, it is too dangerous here. Yeah. You've got something there. Must try to get you to the next safe house now. Well, what then? More waiting, maybe. Who knows? Take only what you can carry in your pockets. Thanks for everything. Thanks for everything. Oh, no much. For your own safety, you must follow the instructions of the underground.
Well, this is it, fella. The last of the grub. Sure, haven't had much luck finding anything to eat around this part of the country. Yeah, with the grub gone and cold weather closing in. It looks like we've got to try for a contact. Try for it? We gotta make one or else. Ah, well, it won't be easy. Can't just step out and say, well, here we are, now get busy and do something for us. You said it. Well, the book says that most likely contacts are religious people and old folks. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be risky whoever we contact. So we might as well go by the book. Right. Older people are more likely to be sympathetic. Yeah. Maybe we can get some help from some of the religious people around here. Sure. After the rough, tough treatment they've been getting, they might help us. Yeah, we've been casing this place all day. Who fills the bill? What about the old guy we saw down in the churchyard? Yeah, maybe you're right. He seems to fill the bill two ways. That's right. He's old and in and out of that church, so I suppose he's religious. I take a chance. Yeah, but how do we go about contacting him? Well, let's see. I'm sure that's his house down there. We'll have to go down and try to talk to him. There's no aerials or phone wires, but there isn't much chance of our being turned in immediately if they are hostile. Listen, this is what I'm gonna do. Tonight, I'll sneak down there and hide just outside his door. And what's the scoop? I don't get it. Here's the idea. In the morning, when it's light enough so he can plainly see, I'll knock on his door. You going in the house? Oh, sorry. I'm not gonna get stuck with a locked door behind my back. Would you even talk to him unless he comes out alone? Right. Hey, how about letting me go with you? No. You stay here in case anything goes haywire. Then at least one of us still has a chance. The contact works. We're both in. Savvy? Well, okay. Down about midnight. Entering a town or village is always dangerous. And even in the darkest night, the evaders must be extremely cautious. Houston's plan was a wise one. He knew that he'd be placed at a terrific disadvantage if he disturbed anyone in the dead of night. The situation would be serious enough after the household was awake. part of evasion calls for the exercise of more good common sense and more understanding of human nature than making a contact. Even though you are met with unfriendliness, even when you think suspicion is only a mask for hatred, a hatred that will lead to a double cross, still you must watch your attitude. Never let anything you do antagonize those you approach. You must not be belligerent or threatening. Your freedom, your life, is at stake. Your safety hangs on a thread. You are on the defensive. You must do everything possible to create confidence and to arouse sympathy.
food. Damon Kiri. It tells Reina. Eat, eat, hungry. Mo Alia. You American. Yes. What you guess? Easy to know. You want eat? Food, yes. What you do here? Oh, nothing here. I, I just want to get back to my people. American people? The soldier. American airman. Oh, ladder. Oh, you can prove? Identification? Sure. Mm -hmm. Dog tags? And, and blood chit. Good. You want help, yes? Yes, for me and my buddy. Mm -hmm. He's hiding on the edge of town. We want to get back to our people. We, your friends, hide in woods today. In night, when no light in village, men come to take you to friends. Thanks. We do. Stay here till old man come back with it. Goodbye. I care nobody see you. Thanks again. No star. Here, see if you can put some of this junk in your pocket. Food and more clothes we will get for you. Okay, friend, we're in your hands. I will take you into the city and... The city? Yes. We really have to watch our step. That is something we cannot avoid. Trust us, we know best. Okay, we'll follow you. Until I throw away this paper. Young boy or girl will pick it up. You follow that one. Come. In towns, evaders will avoid conversation with anyone. They must study the living habits of the natives and copy them. stuff they told us about. Hello. I, uh, waiting for you. This is Dre. Train will take you to next place. Leave soon. We'll put you in one of wagons and seal door. Back. We call a box car. Somebody will open door of wagon when they stop for switch. Go with him. Who? What's his name? No names, please. Well, how we know who it is? He will know number of car. What then? Then new friend will help you cross border. Then maybe you get to water and make rendezvous with submarines. And oh. Where does things to him? Here is something uh, to eat. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? Oh, wait, I give you saying.
Everything looks all right. Hey, how far to where the submarine will pick us up? Much will happen before you will have to think of that. Now you must eat and rest. Then we make plans to take you to border. In the meantime, through the assistance of the underground, Alan, Gordon, and Turner are getting closer to their goal. Here you are quite safe. Soon I'll try to contact one of the rescue planes. To pick you up. How soon? Maybe very soon. Uh, while you wait, please do not leave this room until I say you may. Hold on your hats, kids. Here we go again. Kelton? Just had a message from Crystal Ball. Has three bodies for pickup. Yes, sir. He is standing by. longest wait of the whole trip. Yes, but your air rescue service is always punctual. Hey, hey look, look, there it is, right up there. Look, oh. it.
on, hurry, hurry. Hello. I wish you'd hide. Houston and Wilbur now face their severest test, crossing a heavily guarded border. carry electric current sometimes. This is going to be very, very difficult. Can't we find a better place to cross? No. This best place. Road crossing here. All along border, guards, dogs, beside electric bells and tip wires. You call them uh, booby traps? Yes. That uh, gets worse and worse by the minute. things work out as we have planned, something will happen. So we will have to deal with guard at gate only. Try to knock it off. No. This guard, we think, take money. Money? Well, let's get down to business. in any man's country. Maybe. Maybe he take money and us. Well, let's try it anyway. exactly half that dough. If it works, I'll pay it with interest. It's almost there. Take a guy so long to decide to make a fast buck. What do you think? Looks bad. No, wait. How about it? No go, huh? I do not know. He take money. He say, yes, you can cross border. But one cannot be too sure. Border guards are treacherous. 
But what else can we do? It is taking a chance or going back. Back to what? We take our chances. I'm going back for me. That goes for me, too. Whenever we try to cross, it'll be dangerous, so let's face it. All right. Listen now. Guards say, come on. You crawl under closed gate. Do not touch it. Maybe guard tells truth. What do we do when we get across? Signs on roads show you way to village. Go to old building back of Stone Church and wait. Contact men will watch for you. And for our appointment with the good old Navy. Your Navy very good. And thanks. Thanks for everything. If you come back again, come with army. Goodbye. I will watch from here. So long. Ordinarily, crossing a border isn't easily accomplished with bribery. They're tough. But with know-how, common sense, and luck, any border can be crossed. Hey, how many times you fellas been in the pool today? My third. This is something I dreamed of every night we were cooped up in those scummy attics, remember? Waiting, waiting, waiting. All I can say is this place was worth waiting for, and evading, too. Yeah. Look at this place. Where else do we go? Hey, hey, you guys, look over there. Hey! Hey, you eight balls! Al! Hey, look over there, Michael! <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How have you been? Well, you finally made it. How long have you guys been here? About three weeks. We came in by plane. We just got in by thug. Hey, what gives anyway, young? How's the child here? Mm, steak's that thick. No oh. kidding. Yeah, mattress is that thick. Well, well what are we waiting for? Right. <laughs> At the Evasion and Escape Interrogation Intelligence Center, they are first questioned by a joint inter-service team. How about that rescue? Did you have any trouble contacting our sub? Have any of you any suggestions as to how we can improve our air rescue techniques? Uh, what about the recognition code? Was it adequate? Questioning over, they're given the run of the place. A bath with hot water and with real soap. And all their back pay with drinks on the house. Steak dinners with steaks that are really that thick. Relaxing in recreational sports. And to top it off, 30 days leave. Then they are questioned again by experts at Evasion and Escape Headquarters in Washington. In the light of your experiences, gentlemen, have you any suggestions, or criticisms if you like, uh, for changes in our evasion methods and techniques? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, wait a minute. One at a time, please. Each is asked to sign a certificate stating that he will never discuss his evasion experiences with anyone, at any time, for any purpose whatsoever. That he would not write about them for newspapers, magazines, and books, nor appear on any radio or television show to discuss them. This to ensure the successful return of other evaders. That done, each is permitted to select his next assignment. Yes, these evaders returned because they listened at briefings and intelligently used the know-how they obtained. Because, before attempting to evade, they made an estimate of the situation. They knew where they were going what they were going to do, and they did it. 
because they used cover and concealment to travel quickly and quietly without attracting enemy attention. And they used extreme caution in traveling across hostile territory. Because in dealing with the underground, they relied on them implicitly and patiently once trust had been established. Now, because they use these effective techniques of evasion, they are again ready for action. But none is permitted to return to his original unit or to fly in the same theater of operations in which he had evaded. Gordon became an evasion instructor at the e and &E school. Turner decided he was going to pick up where he had left off, at college. Wilbur wanted to be near his family, so he asked for and got an assignment near his hometown. Houston wanted to fly the jet jobs and became a fighter pilot. And Alan, why he liked the big ships and asked to be assigned to another one. Yes, with common sense, a little luck, and a hell of a lot of guts, these men were able to evade and return.